MPS. Imate prijatelje. Wing Commander Dickie Patinas, the officer commanding number three fighter squadron. So, uh, you were in uh, Libya? I was. I was in Libya from the, um, well, flying out of Gioia del Col in southern Italy uh, with the Eurofighter Typhoon. And I was there from the 10th of June to the 23rd of September this year. You were the part of Operation Elemi? I was, yes. I was on Operation Elemi and I flew over 150 hours uh, in the three months that I was flying over Libya. Your plane of choice was? Definitely the Eurofighter Typhoon. Uh, fantastic aircraft to, to, to go and conduct operations with. Everybody's interested in uh, your great experiences in combat with it. Can you tell me something more about that? Yeah, I'm not surprised that everyone's interested in Typhoon. For, for the Royal Air Force, it's the right choice. It's an incredibly capable aircraft. Um, we're able to, to get airborne from a base 600 miles away from the conflict area. Uh, on the way down uh, to that area, uh, with all the technology and sensors on board of Typhoon, I can have the recognised air picture uh, in, in the cockpit so I can see every single aircraft that's flying over Libya. I can interrogate each aircraft and I can see what it is, how high it's going, how fast it's going uh, and where it is. I'm also able to see the disposition of the maritime fleet so I can see every ship that's out there. Uh, so I can see where the carrier group is, I can see where the destroyers are. And if Astor and J-Stars are flying and they're painting some ground tracks, I can also see those. So I'm able to see what's of interest on the ground in Libya at the same time. And all of that is 600 miles away. Um, so a, a fantastic capability and I haven't even started. And then when I get there, I'm able to, um, to go anywhere uh, in the country extremely quickly and deliver the precise effects that I want to have. So for example, my second to last sortie was a typical uh, example of that. Uh, I went to a refueling area. I didn't know where they were going to task me. Uh, when I took my fuel, they gave me my task and, it, and they said, you need to go to Bani Walid. Um, so I flew over to Bani Walid, to the south and um, east of, of Tripoli. Uh, whilst I was there, we found a tank. Uh, the tank was dug in by a vehicle checkpoint. Because civilians were close by, we couldn't use a big bomb, so we decided to use a DMS brimstone that was on my wingman on the tornado, and we destroyed the tank. Uh, when we finished there, we went back to refuel again, and they said, now you need to go to CERT. So we went to CERT, and they said there might be some main battle tanks firing into the civilians. We had a look around CERT, and there were no tanks. It turns out that the civilians were um, letting off some fireworks. They were just enjoying themselves. I don't know what or why they were letting the fireworks off. So we watched the fireworks. Uh, and there was no trouble there, so we left everyone alone. I went back and refueled, thought we were going to go home. I said, no, you now need to go down to Wadan, to Wadan Hunt. So we flew to Wadan, and there were two um, missile multi-rocket launchers firing at civilians, and there were two vehicles with big machine guns in the back, we call them technicals. So two technicals firing at civilians as well. Um, so we destroyed those four vehicles with bombs from the typhoon and bombs from the, the tornado and then we took some more fuel and we flew back um, to Italy. Uh, to put that into a European context, because not everyone understands the size uh, of Libya, it's a huge country, so that's the equivalent of taking off in Oslo, flying to London where we found a tank and destroyed it, we then went to Paris where the fireworks were and then they, they then sent us to Luxembourg where we found four vehicles, destroyed them before we returned back to Oslo. So you can see we, the aircraft gives you the ability to, to travel huge distances very, very quickly. And when you get there, have a very deliberate and a very precise effect. The total time of that combat mission was? That was seven hours, 15 minutes. And the sensor fusion during that uh, uh, mission, you communicated with uh, other reconnaissance assets. Can you elaborate a bit of Yes, uh, with, with the link we were able to send each other messages, so effectively a text message um, with lots of different types of information within that. Um, we can also use our radars, we can use our, um, our DAS, our defensive aid subsystem, to see what's looking at us. Um, and, uh, and also just the, the sensors, the weapon systems, the Lightning 3 pod. Etc. And that whole combination, combination gives you battle-winning situational awareness. Uh, the, the Typhoon at the moment in the Royal Air Force, uh, the Tranche 1 Typhoon, we're only carrying the EPW-2, so they're the weapons that we dropped. Future Typhoons, so that the Tranche 3 and the Tranche 2, they'll be carrying uh, Paveway 4, Brimstone and uh, Storm Shadow.
Um, okay, uh, did you uh, encounter any uh, air-to-ground missiles, uh, anti-aircraft uh, artillery fire? Uh, there were active air-to-ground missile systems which we destroyed in the early days of the conflict. Personally, no missiles were fired at me, um, but we there were lots of AAA that was always being fired from the ground up on the aircraft. So to, to conclude, you will go into combat mission in a typhoon again? Absolutely. If I'm tasked to do so, my squadron stands ready. Uh, we, we have a, a high state of readiness in the Royal Air Force, and uh, wherever we're tasked to go, we will go to that theatre and we'll um, conduct any missions that are required of us and return back to the UK.